So number seven then from paper two of the 2016 Hermas, there we are, the optimization question. Nine marks, two parts. First part for three, demonstrate a result. Second part for six, optimize it. Let's just find a stationary value basically. So it's this first part here. What have we got? There's this plot of land that's divided into six equal parts with these fences. And it says the total area of this is 108. I better take a note of that. 108 square metres. First part says, show that the total length of fencing here is given by this expression here. Well, it's just simple second year algebra and geometry you're doing here. What have you got? Or even first year, dare I say it. What have you got here? You've got a rectangle split up into these six parts, but it says what's the total length? Well, if x is this portion, you've got three, six, nine lots of x, and you've got one, two, four, six, eight lots of y. That's the expression for the length. Problem, two variables. You only want one variable. You only know how to differentiate expressions with one variable, so that means you need another bit of information to connect y and x. Still, Having put this down, gives you the first mark. Now what's the connection? Well, obviously this is it. The area is 108. What's the area of that given by? Well, the area of this is given by the length times the breadth. The length is 3x, the breadth is 2y, and that should come to 108. So rearranging it to read y equals would be divide by six, which is 118, over x. Doing that gets you the second mark. You don't need to have simplified that though, you could have left it as 108 over 6. And then putting that back into this will give you an expression solely in terms of x. That's what that little x in the bracket means. So you've got 9x plus 8 times 18 over x, which is 9x plus, and that's 64, 144 over x, as required for the third mark. So that wasn't that bad. Now part B, find the value of x that minimises the length of fencing required. Six marks. Now basically that just means differentiate this and find the stationary value within it. Well the first thing is, even though it's possible just to differentiate it like that, I'll rewrite it in that form. So you've got 9x plus 144, x underneath would be x to the negative 1. So, differentiate, L dashed x. Now, I did notice they're getting a wee bit particular about the variables you use. They don't want you suddenly saying y equals and divide by dx, or f of x and f dashed x. It's L and L dashed. And if you don't do that, you could lose a mark. So, differentiate that term, and that would be multiply by the power Take one off the power. Now, knowing to differentiate and starting it, I think that's just getting as far as this bit here, gets a mark. Finishing it off, well, that is it finished off, but you're going to be using it, so why not write it out in the form for evaluation of the equations, which is to have the x squared back underneath. So I'll put that as the second mark. That's two of the six marks so far. Now, the next bit. Will there be an optimum value? Well, you'll find that if there's ever going to be any stationary values. And a stationary value means that the derivative should equal zero. That means that 9 minus 144 over x squared should equal zero. That's the next mark. Now, the next mark after this, which is the fourth one, is just for solving that. Well, you can see how that could be solved. Multiply by x squared. So 9x squared. And that will just become, when x squared multiplies it, it'll knock out 144. Notice that equals 0. I could save writing that just by saying, bring that across and that'll be equals 144. And of course you can multiply by x squared because x can't be 0. That's going to be important later. These are real lengths, not just coordinates can be positive and negative and 0. x has to be a real length, x has to be greater than 0. That matters in this problem. So the next part would be x squared is dividing by 9, that goes 1, 16. Now, the square root, now it's not plus or minus the square root of 16, 
x has to be greater than 0, it's just x equals 4. I'll give the reason, x has to be greater than 0. And that's the fourth mark. That's seven marks so far, that's really quite straightforward. Now you just have to demonstrate that it's a minimum. You could use a nature table. Now notice, since this involves real lengths, there are intervals in which x exists. In this case, x has to be greater than zero. So when I say what happens at four and what happens just before, no matter which way you write it, you could write four less a little bit, four plus a little bit, or you could write just above and below. It's quite clear because x is greater than zero. You should write x here, but you could emphasize the fact that x is greater than zero by saying you've got x here, which has to be greater than zero. That means this is the only appropriate table you should put down. In the marking scheme, they've got a variety of tables involving four, and of course the other root of this, negative four, which of course doesn't apply at all to this problem, because in this problem, x is greater than zero, and there is no consideration of any x is equal to or less than zero. What they do mention though is, if you did have that for some reason, if you did have a table down that had a negative four and a four, you'd have to consider neighbourhoods strictly as in less than and greater than, less than and greater than, because there's a discontinuity here. This isn't a continuous function. If you were to draw a picture of that, a picture of this graph, if you were to go through the values of x and plot the y's, would end up looking something like this. There's a minimum here, yes, there's a maximum there, but there's a break at zero. There's no answer for zero, it's discontinuous. So what you couldn't do is what you can do with normal continuous ones, is just say something like, okay, a bit above, a bit below, but anything in between, that wouldn't apply. And what they're saying is if you did that and did this, you wouldn't get the mark for your nature table. But you're not going to do that at all, because it doesn't apply, because x has to be greater than zero in the first place, and none of that actually matters. So, what's L dashed of x? Well, it should be zero at four, because 16 into that goes 9, and 9 away from 9 is 0. Now, you don't actually need to consider numbers before and after. Strictly speaking, if you're talking about neighbourhoods, neighbourhoods mean immediately, as close as possible, either side of 4. And you don't know what that number is. What number is just slightly more than 4, slightly less than 4? So even when you put in numbers, you might put 3 and 5 in. That's not really a neighbourhood using neighbourhoods, but you can do that of course, because they let you do that. Using neighbourhoods strictly means what would happen if it was just slightly less than 4? Well, if x is 4, this comes to 9. If x is slightly less than 4, the denominator will be slightly smaller, giving a slightly bigger answer, which means it definitely goes negative. Similarly, if x is slightly bigger than 4, this denominator becomes slightly bigger than 16. So this answer here then becomes slightly less than 6, 9, which means that this answer goes positive. So you end up with this shape, if you wish to write shape here. And of course, that's a minimum. Now, all of that is just worth one mark. And you still have to make a final statement, which would be minimum length x equals 4 metres. And there's the final mark. Now there is an alternative, especially for optimization, to putting down a nature table and agonizing over neighborhoods and which numbers to choose to put in. And that's to use the second derivative to tell you whether this is a maximum or a minimum. The first derivative, if you've got a curve, the first derivative gives you the gradient at any point. That gradient changes as you go along. The rate of change of the gradient for instance, in this one, this part here, this gradient is lessening. So it's got a negative rate of change. Whereas at this point, this rate of change is increasing. It's got a positive rate of change. If you differentiate the first derivative again, you get the second derivative. And what the second derivative tells you is how it's curving. Or you could say, as a measure of the parabolic nature of it, how much it curves round. So, just like a, a positive parabola goes like this, having a minimum, and a negative parabola goes like this, having a maximum, the second derivative, L double dashed x, 
will give you a value that tells you which you've got. Notice though, if you've got a point of inflection, the second derivative would be zero, and that wouldn't tell you whether it's a rising or falling one, so it's maybe not quite so useful in the general ones when you've got a table of signs for a whole graph. But a point of inflection would never apply to an optimization question since it has to optimize as in being a minimum or a maximum. This value here in the middle is never going to be an optimum value. So the second derivative is really useful for optimizations because optimizations must be one of these two cases. Anyway, what is the second? Differentiate this again. Well, that's a constant term that disappears. I don't really need to rewrite that as x to the negative 2. I know the process for differentiating. Multiply by the power. That's a negative 2. So negative 2 times that will give me 288. Take 1 off the power, which means if it's already 2 below, it now drops to 3 below. Writing that down would get you 1 mark. Now notice this saves you bothering with the table though, but you have to do this admittedly. Because now you just see what happens at 4. Put 4 into this and you've got 288 over 4 cubed, which you don't actually need to work out because you can see it's positive, so you can say that's greater than 0. So that means the parabolic nature of it there is like a positive parabola, which means it looks like this, which equates to a minimum. And then that, saying it's greater than zero, tied in with this final expression, gives you the last mark.